Okay, so we're going to hop over into the three-dimensional tools, but before we do that, we need some two-dimensional profiles to extrude into the third dimension. So before 3D modeling, let's go ahead into the drafting space and make a 2D profile to extrude. So I thought it would be fun to make some kind of a game piece. It's about the right size for 3D printing and Pick whatever board game you like the best. I'm going to try and make a pawn for chess. So just a circle on top, some kind of a base, draw some simple shapes, rectangles. And I want to make something that I can revolve. So I don't actually need the entire cross section, just a quarter of it. And I'm getting rid of any lines that I don't need. Make sure you don't have lines that are overlapping one another. Experiment with, again, your snap settings and just make kind of a unique, fun cross-section that you can have fun extruding. So here we go. We'll put a little notch in here and just a couple of interesting features. Try and get a, um, a few different line segments also, and we're going to play around with a join feature. And at the very end, you want to make sure you have just one continuous line that's going to close a, a solid region that we can extrude. Okay, right now all of these line segments are separate, so I'm going to join them together, J-O-I-N, and you just walk around the edge, select everything, and if all the corners line up, then it will join together into one giant line. So if you're successful, click on it and everything should highlight together. Okay, back over to 3D modeling now that we have our two-dimensional cross section. And I'm gonna jump up here and try out the revolve command. So I'm opening up revolve. And again, if you just hover your cursor over this guy, it'll give you a description of how to use it. So we'll select our object, enter, select an axis to revolve it around, and I'm going to go the whole 360. So there we go. We've got a little pawn to play around with, and you can click on your view cube, look at a couple of different orientations of this guy. And Okay, let's go ahead and play around with the extrude command. I'm going to keep it simple. We'll just extrude a good old rectangle. So I'm starting up the two-dimensional drawing going from 0, 0 to 10, 5. And I'm going to take this two-dimensional sketch and pull it up into the third dimension. So I'll go ahead and say extrude, select objects, keeping in mind that this was drawn, everything is connected. So I don't have four different lines. I have a rectangle where everything is connected. I'll hit enter. And let's see, we can give it a height of, I don't know, eight. Does that sound good? Make it nice and tall. And then we can play around with things like, I don't know, offset edge. We'll offset that edge. And let me show you another extrude feature. So all of these, when you first start it up, there's a bunch of things in here inside the square bracket. So let's just explore this taper angle a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and let's say, yeah, why not? 30 degrees. And what that is going to do for us is we can make a roof. So instead of extruding straight up, it put a 30 degree taper angle. So as you're playing around with these extrudes, Go ahead and explore what's happening in those square brackets. Okay, for this next loft command, and this is a trickier one to, to use. So what you need is a few cross sections that you want to bring together. So I don't know, maybe we'll start with just a good old rectangle again. And what else shall we have it lofted up to? We'll do something fairly simple. So I'll just make a circle. And let's see. So we'll have a radius of, let's see, I'll just make it 
Okay, so right now both of these shapes are on the ground. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop one of these up to a new level. So I'll go ahead and start up the move command. I'll move objects, enter, and I'm actually going to type in coordinates for the base point. Let's see, I'll move this up to 0, 0. Let's go all the way up to 5. Okay, so now I have this circle that is kind of hovering above this rectangle here. And you can't do too complex of a shape or it'll really fight you. And the other thing you have to make sure with loft is that all of the lines are connected, that there's no corners that aren't connected. Okay, so now that we have our profiles, I'm going to go ahead and select the cross section. And here's the next cross section. And it looks like it's going to be able to do it. So we'll say enter and enter. And now we have kind of this interesting solid shape that was made from two cross-sectional profiles. Okay, I'm going to try out the sweep command for this one. And for this one, one of the fun things to do is make a threaded fastener. So first I'm going to make just a cylinder. So I'm going to make a circle with, let's say, a radius of one and I'll go ahead and extrude this up to a height of maybe five. Be very careful on the dimensions for this one. I'm then going to play around with a helix. So for a helix, this is kind of going to make the threads on our screw so I'm going to say the center of the base, 0, 0, and there's two different diameters. So one at the base and one at the bottom. This is the radius, actually. So I'm going to do the same radius at the bottom and the top. So enter and then enter again. Before I tell the height, I'm actually going to tell it how many turns. So this had a height of five, so yeah, why not make 10 turns? So I'll just hit enter. And we'll say the helix height of five. Okay, so we should have, if I count up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now what I want to do here is I want to create some profile that I'm going to then sweep along this path. And to do this, I need to make that profile to be kind of perpendicular to where this helix is coming down. So I'm going to move my user coordinate system. And with my object snap settings on, I'm going to go ahead and grab this point right here. And I've got my ortho snaps on. And remember, it's going to draw on the xy plane. So now I have the xy plane at the base of a line that I'm going to use to extrude. So here we go. I'm going to draw a circle, center point 0, 0. And the radius of this, I want to set this so that it's halfway up. So. 10 divided by, it's going to be half an inch all the way up, so 0.25, but I don't want it to intersect, so I'm going to actually say 0.24, and that should give me a nice cross section. Okay, now that I have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and sweep this circle, enter, and here is my sweep path. Now this is where your computer might freeze up. You're gonna to have to wait and wait for it. Be patient. Okay, that took a good solid couple of minutes. Let me go ahead and change the view so you can see what's happened here. So we'll go over to the realistic view. So what I have is a solid cylinder and around it I have kind of this tube that's wrapped. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to use the subtract command. And remember, I want to first click on the object I want to keep 
enter and I'm going to get rid of this tube and that will create some threads for me. So there you go. There's an example using the sweep command and I'm not going to make you create this. I'll give you extra credit if you're able to get a threaded fastener. And these guys are actually really important. There's a whole chapter in the book on just all of the different kinds of fasteners. It's part of um, principles of manufacturability. Okay, so that is extrude, revolve, loft, sweep, all of the different shapes and solid editing. So that should give you a good start on things. Okay, so just a grand finale of everything. So walking through these modeling tools, we have something that shows you understand how to use the revolve command. You have something that shows that you played around with the extrude and also the tapered extrude. You have something that shows you played around with the loft command and something that you used sweep. And for your scribble page, it doesn't need to be exactly like this, but have a few objects that just demonstrate that you made it through all of these different types of extrudes.